Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dotsun Ayodele of Africa X, and today we are going to be talking careers and taking your career to the next level. This is Level Up. Uh, with me this evening is a gentleman that is well known in the Calgary space. He's a lawyer, he's a professional, he's a business owner, and he's an immigrant. And he'll be speaking wearing one or all of his hats at some point in the course of this evening. So without taking more time, I'd like you to welcome with me, Charles Osuji. Hello, Charles. Hi, Dotson. Nice to be here. Yeah, fantastic. I, I really appreciate you making the time to uh, spend this evening with us, to have this quick conversation around growing your career and uh, moving to the next level. I appreciate now, it. Now, um, now no, knowing what I know about you, right, I, I know that, you know, being an immigrant is a big part of your story. It is. And, uh, being a trailblazer in the legal space in that sense as an immigrant is definitely something that you can speak to. So can you just give us your, your backstory? Uh, who's Charles um, up till this point? Right. Well, once again, Dalton, thanks for giving me the platform. I'm very glad to be here. Every opportunity I have to share my story, I do it because you never know who is listening, right? Yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> you never know whose life is going to change. Yeah. Um, I am from Nigeria, of course. I came here in 2011. I come from a very large family, wow. I'm the seventh child out of eight. Wow. And okay. yeah, so I definitely benefited from you know, looking up to the older ones growing up. So it was very hard for me to to stray away because my, my older ones had already set the precedence. They already set the, the standard to look up to. Um, so I had that fortune of, you know, having mentors and role models as early as possible in my, in my life. I decided to go into law because I love to read. And I asked myself, what profession would reading give me money, right? <laughs> Okay, that's a good one. <laughs> I, I would think he's talking, but if you're <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, so it was an easy decision. And when I went to law school, I realized that I had a passion to help people. And being a lawyer is, is one of the greatest privilege I've ever been bestowed upon, right? And, you know, you are placed in the, in the, in the place where... Yeah. Uh, you help individuals that are going through dark moments of their lives go from point A to point B. People getting divorced, people getting terminated for the employment after 30 years of employment. Yeah. Uh, people buying the business for the first time. People immigrating to a new country. country. You know, these are very sensitive, life-changing decisions, and the lawyer is in the middle of it all. Yeah. Right. So yeah. went to law school, um, did well came here in 2011 because my brother, Dr. Joseph Osuji, sponsored my immigration. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. came, hustled like everyone else. You know, many people, they think coming to Canada is, um, you know, you, you get to Canada, they fall in there, you wear suit and tie because you're a lawyer. That's not how it works. You know, you have to humble yourself, um, do whatever you can to get ahead, and then challenge some exams which I'll be talking about shortly. So I did all of that. Also did um, all kinds of survival jobs, warehouse, factory, Wendy's, flip burgers, all okay, of it. Okay, okay. I'm going to pause <laughs> you there, right there. And you know, the reason is this. Yeah. It's difficult to picture Charles hustling and trying to survive. Right. And Charles I wonder why. Is Charles <laughs> so, thanks for registering the fact that you've worn those shoes before and you've been Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Absolutely, right. absolutely. I I have so many stories to tell. You know, I've you know there was a time I was sleeping only two three times a week because I had three jobs: morning, afternoon, night. Morning, afternoon, night. Then I sleep. Then morning, afternoon, night. Morning, afternoon, night. Then I sleep. Wow. Okay. You know. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad that wow. I went for an interview after my marathon shift, and I just, and I passed out in front of the interviewer. I wow. literally <laughs> really slept off in front of the interviewer. Okay. You know? So I did all of that, um, but the, the beauty is I had, I was focused, I knew what the end goal was for me. I knew that all of that was going to be short term, right? 
And so I, I hustled for about seven, eight months, then took time away to challenge the exam. So for lawyers, the very first set of exams you write is the NCA, the National Accreditation, yeah. Committee on Accreditation Exams. Um, if you pass those exams, then your um, your you, your degree would be comparable to the degree that you know the folks here obtained from from the university. Oh, okay. Right. So you send in your credentials, your law school transcript, your university transcript. They assess you and give you a number of courses to write. So I did that in late 2012. And then the next step in the journey was for me to find articles, mm. um, which for lawyers would be internship. That is typically difficult for immigrants, right? It's just like finding work. And it's difficult for people that have left their professional network behind. Yeah, you so know, right and now you're trying, to, you're trying to get somebody to give you a job. Who doesn't exactly. Know you. They don't know you. They don't know where you went to school. They don't know if you even what kind of university you go to, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a little, it's a, it's a little difficult. You're competing with people that went to school here, people that have developed relationships from elementary school, kindergarten, kindergarten, elementary, high school, university, law school. You know, but I was fortunate that I was listening to the right people. You know, I connected myself to um, a mentoring organization, connected myself to a few mentors. And I was asking them, how could I get ahead? You know, and, you know, from one connection to the other, I met with Mr. Smith, my former principal. That is the, the Smith, you know, Sujan Smith. Oh, so, sorry, sorry. Yeah. There's something you mentioned that I, I, that I want to pound with a huge hammer right now. Right. So you were in that position where you knew nobody, you had nobody, and yes. you were literally you are literally out there with your credentials in your hands ready to work but no opportunity in front of you None. but you did one thing or you did a number of things you went to go and find mentors for yourself yes, so, yes. mentoring organization first for the purposes of okay you guys don't know me but you this is what you do anyway and i need you to do it for me so you yes. connected yourself to them First. Yes, yes. And they now connected you with people who are interested in taking a chance on people like you, Absolutely. whether they have a position available or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's That's important fun. to build credibility as yeah. early as possible. Yeah. Right. And you cannot build credibility by having in your references, in your resume, your professors back in Nigeria. Nobody knows who, who they are. Mm, you're, not, you're not building credibility by you know, referencing the lawyers that you, know, you worked in their firms back in Nigeria. You, you have to start literally from the scratch to build credibility here. And what I did was I didn't just join any type of mentoring organization. I joined a mentoring organization that catered specifically to internationally trained lawyers. You okay. know, I was quite um, intentional about whom to join. And then they connected me to the executive director, who happens to be the happens to be a lawyer of over 25 years of experience. So imagine being connected to a lawyer um, that you know had all these network and many people under under his radar. So he started introducing me into, introducing me to people. If not anything, he, I, I started building confidence. So for the first time. I sat across from a licensed lawyer in Canada who recognized me as a lawyer. As a lawyer. You know, mm -hmm. I, I kept I, I keep telling him, his name is Mr. Randall. I keep telling Bruce that, you know, I can't remember the conversation we had, the, our very first conversation we had. I don't remember the details. But I remember how he made me feel, right? Mm -hmm. You know, before then, I was running around warehouses. In fact, I was hiding the fact that I was a lawyer so that I could get in in a factory. Because you put in on your resume that you're a lawyer, they know that you know you're just gonna be there for a few months and you're, you're gone. While and you're out. Yeah, you're yeah, too too qualified. So for the first time, I was able to open up, and this person understood my challenges, understood the journey, understood what I needed to do to get ahead. You know, my first and only interview was with Mr. Smith, right? So my first and only interview was the law firm that I own right now. And before that interview. Uh, my mentor, Mr. Rondo, had a mock interview with me. 
You know, he sat me down and told me that in this part of the world, people hire people that they like. Mm. Not necessarily the smartest. I mean, you've gone to law school, there is a presumption that you know what you're doing. Yep. But people hire people that they can get along with. And I should focus on connecting with Mr. Smith on a deeper level at the interview. I hadn't known this before then. So at the interview, I realized that Mr. Smith was a teacher and my dad was a teacher. Oh, so, so you brought out the yeah, so I brought that. that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we chatted about that. I also realized that he he was raised in a small town, Granum, and I compared that to my town as well, which is also a small town. So we kind of, and then he's he's a Christian, you know. Yeah. I also connected it to the fact that I'm from a very religious, spiritual family. Mm. So we ended up talking about those connections and the things that connected us. Nobody was talking about the law anymore. Nobody was talking about where I went to school. At the end of their interview, from there, we went for dinner. And, wow. and So that was, I, basically, that was it. That was it. In the that was it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, you know, I, as an employer now myself, I tell people all the time, don't try to impress, um, you know, a future employer with your wide knowledge of the law and all of that. So whatever it is that you, you're in, try to connect with, with the person you're talking to. But we're going to get into that. So, yeah. So this was how I got into... Um, it was Smith Law Office at the time. And honestly, I just wanted to learn. I was putting in hours and hours. I was working seven days a week. So Mr. Smith could understand it. How could such a young guy be so dedicated, you know, to his craft? So the relationship became, became very deep. You know, two years in, um, we were talking about partnership. So I got into partnership and then few months later, when he was talking about succession, I, I made an offer to him that he couldn't resist. Here I am today. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a solid fairy tale story, man. Yeah, Even though, of yeah. course, with every Cinderella story, there's the yes. godmother and the yeah. ugly sisters who don't like you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end yeah. of the day, it all came good. Yes. Wow. Yes. Uh, um, and I, I have to say that, you know, watching you give back and contribute either with your mentorship with uh, Craig mm -hmm. and your contributions within the Nigerian community as a whole. Right, it just right. shows clearly that you understand, you know, what it, what it means to be an immigrant professional trying Absolutely. to get back into your profession and yeah. find your feet. Yeah. Um, so with, with that as a background, typically what's your... Uh, when somebody says to you... Um, Hi, Charles, I want to take my career to the next level. Before the person gives you any, uh, any further details, what comes to mind for you, particularly because of your profession? What, what are the typical pathways in that sense from, for an immigrant lawyer trying to get back into the profession? based right. on what you've seen so far? So there are different ways of answering that question. I could talk about the processes or the steps you need to take to become a lawyer, a licensed lawyer. Then I could also talk about after you become a licensed lawyer, what next? How do you um, get ahead, right? There's so many lawyers uh, around, but um, you know, life begins after you, be you, you get your license here. So many, so many people, they think that Everything ends at that first initial exams. Uh, it does not. Um, you write the exams and then you get called to the bar. The life then begins. begins. Right? For me, life began when I took over the firm. I, I <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I didn't get the memo. You know, it's, it's a lot of work. We can talk about that. So for me, I would say... Um, leveling up really is adding value to your client's life and making sure that um, you are in for the right reasons and you are constantly developing yourself. Um, the legal profession is very competitive. Yep. Then you add your color, you add your accent, you add your heritage. Oh, boy. <laughs> Why does it sound like your accounting strokes against me right now? 
<laughs> then they add the fact that you, you did not go to school here, you're an immigrant. Mm-hmm. There are just so many odds stacked against you. Yeah. So leveling up means if others are putting in 10%, you're putting in 110% consistently. Yeah. Not for a week, not for a month, not for a year, consistently, consistently. right? Um, consistently. When I took over from when I took over from Mr. Smith, it was a two-man law firm or two-lawyer law firm. Right now, we have about nine lawyers in the space of two and a half years, right? Wow. And okay. it went from six employees to fifteen. And I'm looking at another location because we're running out of space Space. uh, because there's so much work. All of that did not happen overnight. It happened because of consistent um, habits, certain Mm -hmm. habits that were done consistently. Number one, focus on adding value. You know, I've said that before, and I'm saying that again deliberately. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, some... Young lawyers, when they come here to get their license, they, st- they want to start making $200,000 a year, $300,000 a year, right off, you know, of the, uh, of the game. But that's not how it works. You sh- the first year or two of your practice should be dedicated to learning. Learning, learning, learning. And learning is not just about learning the law. It's also learning people's skills. People's skills is critical here, you yeah. know. Back home, you can get away, you know, with a lot of things. But here, if you don't have people's skills, nobody's going to pay you $400 an hour to just talk to you. Nobody's going to um, nobody's gonna trust you with the most difficult decision of their life, right? Yeah. Um, so people's skills is very, very important. Um, secondly, Excellence, being better at what you do, right? Whatever it is you need to do to invest in yourself, learn, learn, learn. Have mentors in different areas of practice, uh, personal mentors, business mentors, and be deliberate and intentional in the relationship. Um, mentorship is not reaching out to your mentor once in, you know, during Christmas to say Happy Christmas and then Easter, Happy Easter, right? Mentorship mm-hmm. is setting up a schedule every yep. every two weeks. You you touch up, and then before the meeting, there is an agenda, what you need yep. to achieve. Before the meeting ends, there is agenda what to do before the next meeting. You've got to be very, mm-hmm. very deliberate about it. The next steps, action the next points, steps. Ac- ac- exactly. accountability, basically. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. And, and you realize that when you are good at what you do, People don't care anymore how you sound, right? People really don't care what the color of your skin is. Um, I was looking at my clients the other day. I'm booked for in, from now until May. No more space for booking on yeah, my calendar. So there might be room for June, July, right? But mm. again, this is the boy from Nigeria that didn't even go to school here. Mm. But over time, you know, out of sheer determination, I've been able to build value um, I was looking at the website the other day. We can't even count the number of awards we've received in the last <laughs> in the last two years. Yeah, you know, so and they keep you, coming in, and they keep coming in, right? So you're focusing on adding value, and every other thing kind of follows, right? And then value, integrity, excellence, yeah. okay, excellent. and then integrity, integrity, very yep. important. Um, if you've seen the world we're in right now, where you know just one bad rap, all, everything falls apart. So, yeah. in my position where I'm right now, I have to be extra careful. I have to be very, 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 very careful. If Mr. Smith had any issue whatsoever with my integrity, we wouldn't be talking about buying his firm, the mm-hmm. firm that I had run for 38 years. We wouldn't be talking about it. Right, you know, a year into the practice, into joining him, he giving me access to the bank account. I was, I was more or less running the firm. You know, just one year uh, into it, he's not had any reason to question my integrity, and that is very, very important. Um, you cannot undermine the the importance of ensuring that your character is impeccable, because once integrity becomes a question. You start missing out on lots of opportunities. Yeah. You start missing yeah. out on lots of opportunities. Right. Then, um, number four, 
you need to have good people around you. It's critical. Build a team. Build a team. Yeah, you need build to have a, a tribe. <laughs> I'm yeah. a huge proponent of team yeah. building. Yeah. <laughs> You need to oh have boy. a tribe of supporters, yeah. especially people mm. like us, right? Especially people like us. Um, so, you... so, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, the way you said build a team, I was thinking employees, but the moment you said tribe, I realized that, okay, this is not just people no, not who just are the team, in the no. office. No. No. This is people I'm going to get to that. Outside and they are yeah. raving about you and they are yes. talking about you and they are yes. standing up for you yes. wow okay okay yes. okay you okay. need to have you need to have at least three or four people that believe in you more than you believe in yourself mm. those are the people that will catch you before you fall yeah. and even if you fall those are the people that will pick you up pick you up right i i could tell you in, uh, in various stages of my career how the people in my life helped me get up. When the opportunity to buy the firm came about, I said no. It was crazy. How do I go from running in warehouses to, to, to running a firm? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was a crazy proposition. You know, but the people I had in my life said that was the right thing to do. Mm. I was like, are you kidding me? They said that was the right thing to do. What's the words that were happy? You borrow money. So yeah. they kind of minimized the, the, the proposition. And I was like, okay, if these guys could see what I cannot see, I, I might as well just give it a shot. And that happens to be one of the best decisions I ever made mm. in my life, you know. And over time, there'll be moments where either there's a disappointment by an employee or a client who you thought you've done a great job, you know, start, you know starts to you know, challenge your services. Uh, there are times even when COVID hit, there are moments where I still went back to my tribe and mm -hmm. I told them this is what is going on and they would trivialize yeah. it and they minimize it and they remind you who you really are. They, yeah. they remind you that you're a rock star. Yeah. Then you get back up and you keep pushing. Yeah, and, that, that, and there's nothing yeah. like, you know, when, when it has rained on your parade. Yeah. And your team show up and they dry you up yeah. and they show you pictures of the last time you rocked out. Yes. And then they give you your guitar once again and you're like, dude, absolutely. Yes, sir, go do it. Absolutely. I can tell you three of my rock stars. I have my oldest brother. Mm. I have my former partner, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, believe, he thinks I can do no wrong, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. He thinks I can do no wrong. He literally that, comes to where I awesome. play soccer to watch me play soccer. That, that is, wow. that is. I told him I play piano in church, and he came to church to watch me play. So, that kind of support, you know, mm. is that's massive. That's is massive. Invaluable. Yeah. It's invaluable. It's invaluable. And you know, when two years with him, he told me that Charles is going to be one of the top lawyers in in Calgary. I thought he was joking. I thought he was joking. And when all of these awards started coming in, but like Charles, I told you so, right? You know. Mm -hmm. Then I also have my, my mentor, Mr. Rondo. These are the guys that they are at least twenty five years older than I am. So they've yeah. seen things. They've they've been to places they've, and they've, they've been there, done that. Seen they've it been all. there, done that. So mm -hmm. you, you tell them how difficult the challenge is and they, they they tell you how things will be in five years, in four years. So wow. you need to have that tribal supporters then you need to have you need to have a value system that is unique to you that you advocate and promote for me is diversity okay if you take a look at my website you, you would see the diversity of ethnicity of race of color and, and and all of that i have literally i have these tiny united nations in my office <laughs> and it's deliberate Right? Yeah, def definitely. Definitely. When you are, if you are building a team and everybody on the team doesn't look like you, it takes quite a commitment and um, deliberate action to achieve that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Truth. Absolutely. So, In my own little way, I'm telling a story. I'm mm -hmm. telling anybody that cares to listen that if you have people of different colors, different races come together and they focus on, you know, core values like excellence and you know, helping clients and providing compassionate legal services, magic happens. And I think I have that somewhere on the website. So I am telling a story, you know, which is unique to, to me. 
so that when you hear Osuja and Smith, something comes to your mind. Yeah. Right? Even the name itself is like a yeah. confluence of, yeah. you know, of cultures. Of cultures, <laughs> right? So you need to have that story. You need to have something, something that is unique to you that you're you're, you're building. And of course, faith. You, mm. If you don't believe in yourself, then there's a problem, right? I've always believed that everything is possible. Um, you just need to have the right people. You need to be at the right place at the right time, um, and there's no limit. So I've always believed in those, in those core values. So faith goes a long way, even though you have your tribal supporters. But at the same time, you also have faith in your ability to overcome. Mm-hmm. When COVID nineteen happened. A lot of business owners were shaking. I was not. So I ended up hiring eight more employees from when COVID started to today. Wow. Yeah. So business okay. actually... So basically, you, you've experienced more growth <laughs> yeah. in COVID than pre-COVID. The most growth I ever experienced was wow. during COVID. Because I, I knew awesome. and I, was, I had faith that uh, this situation that tends to be a, a negative experience for so many people will end up being a positive experience for me. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So I'm going to just recap all these characteristics that you've highlighted mm-hmm. as um, th- things that anybody looking to move to the next level should consider and keep in mind. So right. the, first, the first one you said was value, adding value to your clients. Then you talked about having... Um, integrity as yes. an individual. You talked about excellence before that. Then you talked about having your own value system, right? Which in, in your case was what drove you to build your little United Nations. Yes, and yes. of course, faith. Um, yes. Faith in your ability, faith in your capacity to go ahead and achieve and exceed what you started out to achieve. Yes. So those are those are those are all things that resonate with me as an individual and, and uh, as a professional as well. Um, now to t- take things forward just a bit, when it comes to immigrant professionals um, who are either trying to find their feet mm-hmm. in their profession or trying to get back into the profession, or they are back in the profession and they are trying to build credibility, you know. Um, to make that jump, right? In that sense, what what kind of advice will you be giving them? What should they be looking at? Where should they be spending their time? Um, just right. general advice for absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back again to uh, mentorship, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go back to yeah. I don't think I kind of I don't think I emphasize that enough. Uh, mentorship is critical. Uh, mentorship is critical. I, I I couldn't have gone this far without the help of my mentors. Yeah. Um, as a people, we are we are we're not used to going beyond our comfort zone to establish connections, right? Mm, as true. a people, walk into a room, you're going straight to somebody you know. You know, yep. you probably yes. spend the entire. <laughs> you do that all the time, all the time. You're right. You probably spend the entire night with that person that you know, and then at the end of the, at the end of the day, you're not getting ahead in your your connection. Alternatively, another example is you know, our people come in here and they want to hang around their tribe. You know, people that look like them, people that sound like them, people that share the same history like them. You know, going beyond that tribe is very intimidating for them, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that could be fine at the very beginning of you coming because I I, I believe in being a local champion before going international. Just get to network amongst your community members. But at some some point, you need to go beyond that if you really want to get ahead. Yeah. You need to go beyond that. It's, it's, it's It's like the fellow who says, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, let me use Lagos. I'm an Ajay Gunle superstar. Yeah. And then you haven't even gone to play the boys in Sri Lanka. Exactly. Right? Let me, exactly. Oh, let me bring it home. Yeah. You haven't played, you haven't played the neighborhood team from Fairview. You live in Heritage. 
Exactly. You're not representing Fairview yet. Right, right. right and right. you now want to play for the city of Calgary or the province of Alberta or something like that. It, it does, right. just doesn't work. You need to yeah. start from where you are and then build a reputation in your immediate enclave. When you get strong, grow to the next Good, level. Absolutely. And then grow to the next level. But you yes. need to start from somewhere. You need to start from somewhere. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you start from your immediate community, don't end it there. Go beyond mm -hmm. it. Do, yep. Go beyond it. And an, an, one pathway to doing that would be volunteering. When you volunteer, um, then you're going above and beyond your immediate community and you're mm -hmm. interacting with other people. And this is one of the drivers for having different um, people in my firm. You know, I have Indians, I have Koreans, I have Chinese, I have. Uh, I just hired a Portuguese, I have Spanish, I have all of those people because that gives them an opportunity to kind of penetrate different communities, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, to penetrate different communities. So that is one of the the fastest ways of growing yourself, you know, growing your own brand, having yeah. uh, mentors from within your tribe and outside of your tribe. So that is very important. And... Be kind to yourself. Many people come here mm. with unrealistic expectations. They come and probably they hear, they, they read a story like mine and, and they think that, you know, within a year or two, they get to where I am or they, you know, they, they own their practice or something, right? And then they realize that maybe my story is not their story. Maybe their story is different from mine. And then they start feeling frustrated and they start, you know, feeling despondent. The reality is so long as you stay focused and you're following these habits, you know, that we've talked about, the net result will be success and victory. In the meantime, be very, very kind to yourself. Where I am today, I couldn't have imagined it in my wildest dreams. I couldn't have. I knew something good was going to happen, but I didn't know how it was going to happen, right? Mm. You know, look, how looking, or when it was not clear? It wasn't clear. Mm. It wasn't clear. You know, back in law school, I thought that success for me would be to be the best student <laughs> in class. Yeah, if I was the best student in class, therefore life would be easier. Mm. But when I interviewed with Mr. Smith, my grades didn't even come into play. And trust me, don't no client has ever asked me what my grades was. <laughs> no, they don't. They honestly don't care. Nobody cares, right? They honestly Nobody don't care. care. I, they care if you can help them out. Can you help them? And if you help them out, they come back again and again and refer you to their friends, and they become an unpaid agent for you and your firm. So, you know, be be very kind to yourself um, in, in your journey. And be open to opportunities. You just never know what the story is. Wow. Wow. Okay. Now, now for, I think, the last thing, these, these things that you said are things that are clearly very um, critical for immigrant mm -hmm. professionals looking to, men to level up. Seeking, mentoring, volunteering, and of course having the self-awareness to be able to say, hey, however it went down, it may not be there yet, but I will get there and I'll just keep taking it one step at a time. Yes. Any, any final words, any last words that you want our audience to take away? Reach out to people. Mm. You know, this is not Nigeria where um, to, get a, to get in touch with... Um, your governor is like pulling teeth or to get in touch with your local government chairman is like pulling teeth here you go to linkedin send an email send an, an email whatever it is reach out um you know my current student at law reached out to me on linkedin you know we connected and then one night it was like 9 p.m it was like hey charles i'm out of job i'm looking for where to volunteer um, just let me know if an opportunity arises. And I texted him right away to show up in my office the following morning. That was it. He showed up, he volunteered for a month, an opportunity came up for him to be a student, and he's now a student, wow. right? And he's on his pathway to becoming a lawyer. 
Yeah. Um, so, and so there are so many opportunities out there. Reach out to people. Um, the culture is very different here. When you reach out to people, 98% of the time they get back to you. It might take a while to get back because people are, people are busy, yeah. but they ultimately get back. And, and when you reach out, let the conversation be sincere, right? Mm. Um, let it not be transactional. It's irritating when people reach out to me. <laughs> <laughs> when people reach out to me, the very nice thing you hear is either I'm looking to come to Canada, how can you help me? Or I'm looking to work, I'm looking for work, can you make an offer to me? Okay, it's always me. something that they want, right? Mm -hmm. They don't, they haven't actually how you're doing, how is business, they haven't tried to connect sincerely with you, but they have thrown out all of these wants and desires. Right, but that's not how relationships work. Um, regardless of where people are in their life, there's always something to um, bring to the table yep. in a relationship. But I've seen people reach out to me and, and told me, Hey, Charles, if you go to um, the people's page on your website, there's a typo in, in the second paragraph. You might want to correct it. Or, oh, Charles, I've heard so much about you. Can you tell me what you did differently? You know, you can see the sincerity yeah. in, in, in that connection. Yeah. And then let the connection grow organically and naturally. Yeah. It gets to a point where, you know, there was this guy, I think he finished from law school in Nigeria recently. You know, whenever there was an award or whatever, he reached out, congratulates me and... And, and tell me one or two things that he's picked up from my interviews. And, and when he, I think it was Christmas, I just asked him for his, for his account, you know, sent, because I, I could just tell that this guy was just being sincere mm, in the relationship. Yeah. And if an opportunity arises and I can help him, I'll remember him, you know. So, so for young, you know, for people coming here newly, in as much as the urge is there to get ahead, when you're connecting with these people, make sure that you're not going to them with all your problems and desires forefront. Be very honest in the conversation, be very honest in the, in the, in the connection. Um, actually find out what these people did differently to get them to where they are. People like to talk about themselves. Yep. Find out, um, you know, tell them that you're willing to learn from them, you're willing to follow their footsteps and show that desire to connect then every other thing comes afterwards right mm -hmm. which is um an important an important element uh, that is missing in in so many of these connections yeah wow this this has been this has been very very informative for me because um not because i don't know these things but it just makes sense I, I recently hired, well, it's not recent anymore. It's almost mm -hmm. six months. Mm -hmm. I recently hired somebody who reached out to me on LinkedIn for the first time, I think some probably about a year ago now. Okay. And it was just from that simple, uh, hello, hi, how are you? And then it became, oh, yeah, oh, I'm coming into town. Can we have a coffee? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I see this is your progression, public accounting, corporate accounting, back into public accounting, you know. Just those, it was very clear to me that I knew what he wanted was a job, but he did not approach it that way. Exactly. But we got that, we got there eventually. Yeah. We yeah. did get there. And I, yeah. it's a decision that I am very happy I made here today. So there you I, go. I totally get you. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm going to repeat again exactly what Charles said. said. Find mentors, volunteer, right. and be authentic in your relationships, and definitely we'll get there. Right, so, right. Charles, I want to say thank you very much for making the time to speak with me today. It's um, getting getting your attention for me. Right. <laughs> I thought it was going to be hard, but you made it nope. easier. <laughs> and I also want to thank you um, for your audience listening. You know, people like you are very rare. You make your time to create a platform. Um, for individuals like me to inspire others, even if it's one person that gets inspired, 
you know, is enough. One lady told me that because of my story, she moved from UK to Canada. Wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So you just never know who is listening. And you have your accounting practice going on, but you still make, make time for a platform like this for people like me to share our stories. So um, big ups to you. Um, the, the stories that are coming out now, a platform like yours, was missing when some of us came to this country. You know, mm, true. You true. know people that came early 2000 or late 2000, there wasn't a lot of material for reference purposes. You would just true. figure it out. And then many people fell in the hands of uh, a few folks that didn't get it right and then they projected their yeah. sad story to them and then, the they, then, they, then they, they, get, they get stuck, right? But the more positive information out there um, that is accessible to people coming, the better. Nice. Yeah. Wow. I'll say thank you once again, Charles. Yeah.